Dear Star Suck. This sucks. I am so unhappy. Is this causing you anger issues? Answer me! We're here to help. This short video will increase your knowledge and understanding so you can become a CNC star. Kevin Barnett in the Carbide 3D Studio. There are five basic factors that govern the results you get from any V carve. We're going to talk specifically about stars because they do a good job of demonstrating the elements at work. I've made these handy comparison boards for reference. One is with a 301 90 degree V bit, the other with a 302 60 degree V bit. They're made of MDF with simple paint on top. This is something you can do at home and you definitely should be utilizing MDF as a test material throughout your design process. These are going to take us through the various factors involved and we start with overall depth of cut. Your overall depth of cut is something that has a massive effect on the outcome of your project. It is the limiting factor until the art is the limiting factor. And I'll show you what I mean as we go across from here. You need to understand that the angle of descent is set by the depth of cut until it is limited by the edges of the shape. In the case of a star, all of that is calculated to achieve a point in the middle from the five arms of the star. With 1.5 millimeters, I can go from the corner of the star to a full depth of 1.5 millimeters in a smooth slope, but it is not capturing all the edges of my star as drawn on the screen. If I double that amount to three millimeters, I end up with something that looks a lot more like a star, but it still is not as wide as I have drawn it on the screen. If I double my overall depth of cut once again to six millimeters, now I'm capturing the entirety of my art as drawn. And I know because I can run a set of calipers from this point to this point, and I can measure in the software and I'll get the same number. Now it doesn't mean that I've achieved the maximum depth of cut that's possible within the star. If I go to the 12 millimeters as my overall depth of cut, now I get a little bit deeper cut while also maintaining all of the art. I've got an increased slope to that point. If I go to 24 millimeters, I end up with exactly the same result as I do with 12. Even though I've doubled my overall depth of cut that's allowable, now I'm being entirely limited by the ability of the cutter to create an angle from the point to the center, a smooth slope within the bounds of the star. So there is a maximum amount that can be achieved with a particular angle of cutter and a particular shape. Okay, I know those of you with a sharp eye noticed this difference on the corners of the stars. I'm gonna get to why that's the case in just a couple of minutes. We have to get to another topic. You guys are really sharp, and I know that those lines aren't, so we'll address it, don't worry. There are also a couple of mechanical factors that most certainly affect your overall depth of cut. When you're purchasing a project panel or some wood from a wood shop, it appears to be completely flat. That's not always true, and in most cases, it's really not true, especially if you're shopping at a big box store. So when you have a field of 50 stars, it becomes quite easy to see slight differences. You need to face off your material if you're gonna do a field of something to make them all look the same. Be sure and get flat, flat with that material. Secondly, your zeroing process needs to be consistent. You have to zero out, bang, right on top of the material. You can use a bit zero or you can use the paper method. Either one, make your zero exact so that your stars come out exactly the way you've drawn them. Next, we move on to size of your art. Taking a look at the second row on our board, I've left my overall depth of cut at 24 millimeters. All I've done is increase the size of the star as I move across the board. This first star, not too much depth, but as you add size, you'll notice how much more quickly the bit has to be plunged into the material to maintain that same smooth slope from the center of the art to the center of the star all the way to the outer point. Until finally, on the far side with the biggest star, we end up limiting only by the depth, and we end up exceeding the capability of this particular bit to capture all of the art with that smooth descent. Checking in with our 302 60 degree board, you'll notice how much more quickly depth is created with the 60 degree cutter. It is forced to plunge into the material quite extremely, and by the time we get all the way over to the largest star, we've actually exceeded the depth available, the thickness of our stock. Now I knew this was gonna happen. I saw it in the simulation and I saw it in the preview inside of Carbide Motion. It'll warn you, you're going below 
the level of your stock. It will show you you're about to go below the level of your stock. I went ahead and did it anyway just to make sure that you guys could see it. But that goes clear through our material. You don't want to be doing that. This is where the diameter of your cutter comes into play. On my 301 90 degree V-bit board, this last star is a bit distorted. Because the width of the bit cannot capture the widest portions of the stars. But I have not exceeded the overall thickness of my stock. So it is possible to cut that size star with a standard V-carve inside of this 3 quarter inch plywood. If I go to a wider 90 degree bit, I can in fact capture all of that star. It will carve the star perfectly. It will go to the exact same depth. I just needed an increase width to my bit. So that's something you can balance in your designs. Do you have a wider bit, a thinner bit? You often don't need to create this large of a star in a V-carb because you don't want to hog out this much material. You don't want to be this close to the back of your stock. This is where the distortion that you noticed earlier comes into play. As I get to 12 millimeters for my overall depth of cut, we start to exceed the angle of the cutter and start going onto the edge. Now this still has a cutting edge on it, so you can have that as a look, but you do notice I start to get three lines in the corner rather than one. Something you need to be aware of and something, again, you can apply that larger, taller cutter to. It maintains the same angle over a greater depth of cut. This kind of look might actually turn out to be something you're interested in. It's all about you and your artist's choices. You have to know what you're doing in the software and what the practical results are on the board. Sometimes practical results, yeah, they're even better than you designed it. Happy accidents. Hey, quick note here. If you're not getting the results you anticipated, be sure and check that whatever cutter you indicated in the software is the actual cutter you have in the machine. You wouldn't be the first person to mix up a 301 or a 302 in an operation. That also applies for the 501 or 502, because yeah, you can do V-carves on a much smaller scale with these tiny little tools that are some of my favorites. Let's get back to it. This leads us to our final factor, V-carve versus advanced V-carve. As the size of your art increases, you need to consider using Advanced V-Carve, especially when working with thinner stock. Advanced V-Carve allows you to set a depth and capture any width of your art. The software will run your V-Bit along the inner edge of your art, allowing for only the depth that you've set. In this case, I've set 3 millimeters as my maximum depth. Any area inside of the star not captured by that angle to the point of your V-Bit will then be pocketed out like a normal pocket with a flat bottom end mill. You'll set your end mill for removing that material on the inside, and you will set the overall angle of your V-bit. It will calculate and know the distance between the inner edge of your art and the limit to that bottom edge. Here with a three millimeter depth of cut limitation, you'll notice the progressive angle of the 45 and the steeper angle of the 30. In other words, 90 and 60. So you get different results. You again have to make artistic choices to decide which is best for you. You notice how much depth you get out of a standard V-carve. You may not want that, or maybe you do. Depends on the sign, depends on the look, depends on what it is that you're making. Choices for you to have as long as you understand how V-carve and advanced V-carve work. We've given you more knowledge and understanding about V-carve and advanced V-carve, so hopefully your stars no longer suck. Go out, experiment, and explore. And we'll be back here with more information, ideas, and inspiration. <laughs>